Hey everybody, Dr. Friel again, Director of Curriculum Instructional Assessment here at Southwestern. I'm going to read Chapter 14 of The Adventures of the South Pole Pig, a novel of Snow and Courage by Chris Kurtz. Chapter 14. The next morning, the door at the top of the stairs opened. Flora leaped to her feet. Captain? A sailor came down, wearing a dirty apron and holding a bucket of slops. He was a giant of a man, with hair on his arms as long and curly as a sheep's, and a lower lip that hung open, showing huge, uneven teeth. The ship's cook wants to check on his bacon maker. He had a voice like the scraping sound of a shovel on a cement floor. Slobber collected in the corners of his mouth as he talked. Time for eating my little pork chop. When he dumped the slops into a bowl, Flora gl gladly grabbed a bite. Wonderful. Biscuits with gravy. Good, Piggy. You ate everything from yesterday, he said, adding her on the flank. Amos likes a big eater. Flora looked up. If only he knew who the big eaters were around here. Amos wants you to grow fat. So fat, so big. His long arms, which usually hung almost to his knees, were widespread. Flora plunged her mouth into the slops. She was on her way to getting stronger. Now she needed to get bigger, too. She looked over the top of the bowl, glancing around for what she knew was waiting and watching. Sure enough, as soon as the cook's footsteps faced at the top of the stairs, the three rats slipped out from behind the boxes. Whiskers, matted brown fur, impossibly small, shiny eyes. Their leader, the one with the bald patch, crack, clacked his curved yellow teeth together. Snap! Snap! Taking up the call, the other two clacked with their teeth as well, and the ocean of rats she'd imagined the day before started coming out of the shadows. Flora swallowed a last mouthful, backed up, and locked her trembling knees. Then the bald rat king hissed. It was a terrible sound, worse than the teeth clacking. As soon as he did this, the army of rats swarmed over her head, food, snarling at one another as they cleaned out her bowl. When it was spotless, they slipped away into the shadows all except for the king. He crawled back into the bowl, sprawled on his back, and began to lick the gravy from his round middle. With every lick, she could see his yellow teeth. She could smell him, too. It was a sour smell, and Flora guessed that all the licking in the world wouldn't get that stink out. When he was done, the rat rose up on his hind legs. He opened his mouth, and he hissed again. Flora tried to step back further, but the collar jammed up under her chin. What did he want now? Thankfully, nothing. He waddled away until Amos came downstairs with dinner. Flora got ready to gulp mouthfuls as soon as the slops hit her bowl. While she swallowed quickly, she kept one eye on the shadows and the other on Amos. Please stay, she thought. But as soon as her third bite, he clomped off. This time, he was only halfway up the stairs when eyes, ears, and whiskers slipped to the dim light. Flora hurried away, still chewing. This was too big a challenge. One pig against an army of rats didn't seem at all fair. That night in her dreams, naked tails snaked across her, baby, her body, twisted around her neck, and choked her.